You're listening to the Studio PTBO Podcast, where we talk all things marketing to help you build and grow your business online. Welcome to the latest episode. Welcome to the Studio PTBO Podcast. We are back and we're back at it again with another guest. My name is Cody May from Studio PTBO. Really excited to chat with you today a little bit about how we can really but just about marketing mindset about music today we're just gonna go we're gonna talk all things and i have a very special friend that i've known over the last couple of years uh, on the podcast by the name of ty wilson how's it going my friend how are things going with you today oh i'm great brother i'm great how about yourself you know sunny california you're you're living the dream down there sunny california I just got back from a walk so you know yeah. I'm en- i am enjoying the sunshine i hear that uh, you're not dealing with the best weather right now but uh, i've seen that on social media too so you guys got snow today it sounds like in ontario uh we don't have any snow today fortunately uh i haven't seen it in a while but uh, (laughs) that's neither here nor there really excited to chat today kind of about what you're doing in the music scene and uh, just about your backstory where where you're at where you're coming from um why don't you give our listeners kind of a high level overview on who you are what you do why you do it how we met, maybe kind of like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Like just give us a high level overview on who is Ty Wilson. Cool. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm Ty Wilson. Basically, I've been a musician for, I mean, over 20 years now, which is scary to, to think about. Um, I started playing like screamo and metal music in high school. Um, and then I switched over and kind of was doing some rock stuff in, in the uh, early 2000s. I had my first record deal when I was 16. I had my second record deal when I was 22. Uh, I put out a record in 2014 called uh, Degrees of Separation. Um, and then I took a hiatus for about eight years and um, kind of just drifted around and wasn't sure if I was going to make music anymore and and really um, you know, did a little bit of soul searching the last two years and uh, decided, you know what, I'm not, I'm not done yet. And, uh, and here we are. So um, by this, you know, by the time this comes out, I've, I'll have released my first single in eight years called um, Catch You in My Next Life. And uh, it'll have, it'll be on that radio. So first that's kind of the single, high level, man. That's, that's the overview. <laughs> first single in eight years. That's super exciting. Yeah. But let's back up a little bit. Yeah. Um, Ty and I met because we we both worked at Best Buy together. Yes, uh, yes. it's so funny. I put out a video the other day about like kind of like three things Best Buy taught me. Right. Um, you know, we we met like working in stores, linking phones together, and like kind of like now like you're doing your thing, I'm doing my thing. Yeah. I'm just like kind of like really curious, like why did you stop playing music, mm-hmm. and like what like what is it that allowed you to kind of come back and re I guess re inspire you to go and do music again. Yeah. So we're going to get pretty deep here. Uh, and I don't, I don't mind doing that. Um, basically after 2014, when I released my, my previous, uh, EP, um, it didn't, it didn't, it kind of flopped. So, uh, it didn't get picked up by any radio stations and there wasn't much that happened afterwards. And so, um, at that time I had, a few family deaths happened, namely my grandmother passed away who had been based my like musical rock. She's the one that got me started in, in music. Um, and you know, bought me my first guitar and all that kind of stuff. And she was a country singer, um, you know, back in the sixties, had her own TV show in Peterborough and stuff. And so that kind of put me on a spiral into a pretty major, um, depression. And, uh, so I kind of, I, I moved around and moved out West for a while and, and I was still playing like, you know, I was doing covers, I was busking, I was, I was doing small shows here and there, but I really got away from writing my own material. Mm-hmm. And, um, and really, I, I kind of just moved myself into the working world and was going to be content, not creating and, and just kind of like, you know, I had my shot, it didn't work out. Um, and now we move forward uh you know with a normal life and that's what i was going to do and uh two years ago my 30th birthday hit um and i was just in a really bad spot i i you know i was drinking a little too much the pandemic had just hit i you know was just super depressed and and i weighed over 300 pounds at that point i i just had like kind of half given up and um about six months into that 
I just kind of looked at myself in the mirror and, and went like, yeah. you know, this isn't, this isn't done yet. You're not, you got so much more to offer so much more to give, um, you know, stop, stop feeling bad for yourself and, and, uh, you know, get your shit back together. So, um, luckily with some really supportive friends and family and the producer that I just worked with, like he hounded me for a good year to write songs with him. And, and, yeah. and, uh, you know, he saw something that I didn't see anymore. And, and, uh, so over the last, you know, year and a half, I've, I dropped, um, 90 pounds and, uh, Amazing. I got, I got three singles coming out this year and, uh, and yeah, just happy to be back playing music and, and doing my thing. I think that a lot of people can resonate with with that, especially, you know, the fact that we just went through the pandemic and, you know, we were all going through very similar things. Like we were all locked down. We were facing, you know, it's kind of like a lot of the crap that we deal with on a on a daily basis kind of come came all at us all at once. Like what would you say to somebody that is might be in the same situation where they feel that? similar way where it's like, Hey, I want to see, I want to make change in my life, but I'm just not sure how to, how to see the change through. Like what, what advice would you have for them? Because that's a pretty massive transformation that you went through from both a health perspective, but it sounds yeah. like it really impacted even that the, the decision you made to kind of push through, it sounded like it had a, also an impact on your mental health. I'm just curious, like what you would say now, kind of looking back because, you know, hindsight's 2020. Yeah, uh, I'm just curious sure. what you would say. Yeah. So I, the biggest thing I would say is, um, I mean, go, go to therapy. <laughs> that's, that's a big first one. So I started yeah. therapy and I got diagnosed, um, ADHD and, 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 uh, clinical depression. Um, so I got medicated for those two things. And, and honestly that like, I won't say like they were, it was a game changer for sure, but it's one of those things that like, there's no magic pill that's going to change your life. Yeah. Um, but it's, it gives, you know, I maybe gave me, 35% more energy to, to be able to handle things better. And so, okay. um, the one thing I talk about pretty openly with all of that stuff, um, or that I, the advice I give is just start small and in small increments. Like yeah. I now, you know, I work out five days a week now and, and, you know, my warm up was what I was doing as my actual workout the first couple months. And mm. so, start small. Like I started out 15 minutes on a, on a cardio machine and then just walks with my dog, um, outside, uh, three or four times a week. And then really when it comes down to it, it's just, it's not, it's not eating, it's not eating crap. Uh, yeah. I quit, I quit drinking for a full year and that was like, you know, a ton of empty calories that, that I cut into my diet. And, uh, that was also just to like show that I could do it. You know, yeah. if you, if you can show yourself that you can achieve these, like, you know, really these feats that, that a lot of people would have a hard time with, um, that just all helps out and gains the confidence. But the biggest thing is just small steps, start small and just every week build on that. And, and it might seem tiny in the beginning, but those small changes are going to snowball into, you know, big changes and you'll start realizing it and start seeing it, you know, within the first few weeks, you know, every three weeks, kind of do a check in with yourself and, and just realize how much farther you are along than, than you were before. Yeah. Your journey has been super inspiring seeing, you know, you ever like, you know, seeing online, like watching from afar, everything that you kind of gone through and kind of where you're at now. It's like, I think that oftentimes like we see the finished product on online yeah. um, and, you know, we don't always hear about how you actually get to the finished product. So it's always inspiring to hear that, you know, you reached out for help that you, you know, you, you chatted with somebody. It's like, you know, these things, especially the starting small, like a lot of people, like, I don't know if they're afraid to start. They're just afraid to start. Like they're afraid to sometimes start small. Um, but it's the small steps that really make the impact and really make the change. So it's really, it's really unique. And I thank you really more than anything for sharing that because I think it, it'll have a large impact on somebody else who wants to make it own, a change in their lives. And, I, I wanna I wanna shift gears here a little bit and I wanna chat a little bit about um about your music and and because that that in itself is a massive transformation as well. And yeah. I'm curious kind of like where the inspiration come came in because coming from somebody like I'm like I grew up as like when you said, Hey, I played hardcore music, like yeah. that was me. Like I, right, I loved right, playing yeah. music growing yeah. up. And I think there came a point in even my life where I'm like, ah, you know, like you know, put out an EP. Eh, it went okay, but like yeah. you know, you just kind of like you you let it fall by the wayside. Like what was it that inspired you to start writing music again? Because I think that there's so many people that are musicians that 
stop because they, they haven't quote unquote made it yet. And yep. they're going to get discouraged. Like what it, was it that kind of re-inspired that dream, I guess, of like wanting to create music and wanting to ha- use that like kind of like a self-expression of yourself again? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing was, uh, funnily enough, um, getting sober <laughs> ended up bringing so many, so much like so many feelings to the forefront that I had to just deal with and, and sit with. And uh, I, I had a, a lot of fear, which was just, you know, ego in the background when I quit drinking that like, you know, I'm not going to be creative anymore. Like that was my that was how I, I, I did things. And, and it ended up being the complete opposite. I, I was more creative when I was sober, because I was dealing with things or I had to find a different way to deal with emotions and feelings and instead of just drinking all the time. So um, that was the biggest thing. And so these the the three new songs that I'm releasing this year uh, are going to be off uh, an EP that I'm going to put out. Uh, there's three more songs to go along with it, but uh, called Annie Hero. And, and basically it's they're all different escapisms or different songs like one's a really hard look at 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 drinking one is you know how drinking uh ruined a relationship like there's there's all it all kind of co- coincides with each other that way but um the best way i could get all those emotions and feelings out was to write and so i i started writing and then um the first uh writing session i had with with the producer that i was talking about sean moore um it ended up being actually the first single, uh, but we that opened the floodgates. I just uh, after that, I was almost daily. I was writing new stuff in my notepad, and 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 uh, and it really kind of just let me, yeah, start writing again. The writer's block, the eight years writer's block had been uh, <laughs> had been erased or taken down. Yeah, you know, like it, it must have been difficult to kind of get back into the studio and record these these things. It's almost like you're shaking off some of the cobwebs, like mm-hmm. you know, not ha- have you recorded like or is like this is the first time in eight years you've been in a studio? No, so that's the nice thing is uh I'm there's another project that I'm currently a part of uh, called Against the Wind, where I, it's a Bob Seeger tribute band. Yeah, it's I've a, seen that. That's, that's, that's piece, freaking yeah. awesome. I love that. Yeah, man. Those videos online. I love it. Yeah. So so uh, I was in the studio with them um, a couple of times. I, I was a studio writer in Toronto, um, you know, in my earlier 20s. And so it's kind of second nature, that, that stuff. Um, so it wasn't I, I mean, there was like parts of the process where I was shaking off the cobwebs, but um, for the most part, like I co-produced the, re- the, the, the singles and, and, uh, I actually got to like, kind of get my hands dirty and, and really dictate where the sound was going, um, with these recordings, which I didn't have the opportunity to do that in the past. So, yeah. um, it was, it was really rewarding to be able to do that and really say like, okay, this finished product is, is mine and it's what I wanted it to sound like. And it's, and it's really authentically me. So, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, there was some cobwebs to shake off, but uh, I, I got through them pretty fit, pretty quick. When you say authentic, authentically me, um, mm-hmm. what? How would you describe the music that you're writing uh, today? And and like, what what can people expect with these singles? So I'm going to overarch and just say country music, but uh, I okay. think it's more like it's alt alt country, uh, Texas okay. country. I don't know, whatever you want to call it that way. It's definitely got a little more of a rock edge to it. Um, and it's authentically me in the, in the fact that like my, my previous record degrees of separation, I was on a pop label. Um, and, uh, I loved my experience there and I do love that record, but it didn't, the sound that came out was not exactly what I had envisioned for the whole mm-hmm. thing. And so, um, yeah, now I feel like with these recordings, I, I really got to, just have my way and you know sean was uh super um helpful and and basically like you know you're the boss just let me know what you want and and we both kind of went back and forth on a number of on a number of things and and mixes and blah etc 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 instruments what we're going to use here and here and uh and finally it just kind of uh, it came out with this product that that i'm super proud of and, and happy with so and, yeah. and you talk about product because like so much mm-hmm. of like artists artists at the end of the day like you know you're you're creative like you're creating things like what is kind of the marketing strategy behind the product or behind the music 
what do you plan on doing? Are you on TikTok? Yeah, Are you not yeah, on TikTok? Yeah, Are we having this no, conversation today about we're, you being yeah. on TikTok? I'm just curious, kind of like what what is the marketing yeah. strategy? Uh, so I'm I'm trying to figure out the TikTok right now. Actually, that's been the last two weeks because I know how important it is. Uh, you for need marketing. to be on TikTok. I, I am telling you, you if there's be, one yeah. thing you hear from me, you need to be on TikTok. There are yeah. so many creatives that are blowing. There's actually a creative out of like Guelph area that just blew up out of nowhere. Oh yeah, I don't know if well, you heard about her. Her name is uh, Sadie Jean. No, okay, uh, I haven't heard. She her wrote she wrote a song, and a bunch of people did a bunch of duets on the actual yeah. uh, song, and she she went from like thirty thousand followers to over five hundred thousand followers on TikTok, and her song has been streamed fifty million times. Holy shit! Yeah, I, 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 I that's TikTok. been part of my branding. Yeah, that's yeah. part of my marketing strategy for for all this new music. And and unfortunately, um, between myself and my girlfriend, we're just trying to to figure out what the best way to do it. So I've been watching all these TikTok videos of all these new artists releasing songs and going like, okay, what can I steal here? What can I? Oh, really? or, yeah. And uh, so between that, I mean, Instagram, Facebook, those are all mm -hmm. big. Uh, the songs, the first or all three songs will be going to radio, but I, I have a radio tracker doing um all that work on the side um and then uh, just getting out there and playing shows you know mm -hmm. content websites promotions facebook instagram promotions uh doing as many uh, you know podcasts uh interviews press that i can i can do and that's that's it man just just grind yeah. just, <laughs> just, just grind, grind. Just get, a, yeah. get in front of me like and it's not wrong like you know it's like exposure but like you know, yeah. I want to I want to chat about TikTok a little bit because, like, you know, Let's I've been it. very bullish on TikTok. Yeah, as a platform, especially for artists, because it's the only app out there that if you were to invest all your time, I would go all in on TikTok because the only app other than like Spotify that you're gonna have the ability to just get organic views. Growth, like, yeah. Like the the Sadie Jean and like if uh, afterwards, like we, we can even throw this up as a graphic potentially. Mm -hmm. Um, what was really cool and you should really look into what she did. Um, she did like an open verse challenge. So she took her song right. mm -hmm. and she essentially did an open verse challenge and, and other artists and creatives were essentially writing a verse to right. that specific, um, song. And, right. uh, there was another artist, uh, familiar, like in the hip hop industry, Russ, uh, mm -hmm. his song Hamsum are just absolutely blew up because they put like a TikTok artist, creative artist on the song and they created like an actual remix of the song it just blew up it's on the top like 40 billboards yeah. it's an independent label it's just insane it's, what tiktok is doing yeah right now yeah. for artists it's an absolutely yeah. it's incredible it's the same thing with uh i don't know if you've heard of her you've probably heard the song robin Adelini. she's from um port perry area okay. i think but she had that f-150 song and it, okay it blew up on TikTok, and now you know she signed to Warner. She's playing boots. Oh, she's she, doing awesome. okay. I didn't yeah. hear about this. No, that's, yeah, yeah. So, what was your know, name? Robin Adelini. Adelini. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, F one fifty is the big song that she that she put out. But um, yeah, it, it it all TikTok, man. It's it's yeah. It's I, it's where I, I would I'm trying I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I hear you. I spent I spent like I remember Neil saying to me two years ago. Yeah, you need TikTok. You need to post more on TikTok. I'm like ah, you know, I'll, I'll get there. Yeah. I'll figure it out. But now I'm like now I'm really seeing like these artists blow up, and I'm like oh my god, like this app is amazing. And the fastest growing demographic for TikTok right now is thirty ages thirty eight to fifty five. Oh, which wow. is like yeah. absolutely insane. It's just it's asinine to to see it's my demographic, hundred percent. So you need yeah. to be on TikTok. Yeah. Um, I I want to I want to know a little bit more about like the writing process and like what yeah. what what it might have been different this time versus mm -hmm. uh, last time. Like what what to expect in regards to like vocals, like you know, in regards to like you say country, but like it has mm -hmm. that rock type country. What we, we know the inspiration like you kind of mentioned, but like maybe walk us through kind of the recording process. Yeah. So uh, I recorded it or we did the live band tracks. I didn't want to do. So the biggest, th biggest thing or one of the big things with me is I wanted it to be organic instruments for the majority of the record. So then when I say record, three songs, EP, whatever. Um, so we went to a place called Catherine North Studio in Hamilton, and we laid down all the bed tracks there or the instrument tracks there. So guitars, bass, and drums. Uh, and then I wrote, I laid down a scratch vocal there. And then we took those, uh, we kind of hammered it how we wanted the songs to sound. Like it was a full day for three songs where we just kind of like 
ran them, figured out what was sounding good, what wasn't sounding good. And then once that was complete, uh, I went down um, a couple times to to Sean Moore's studio um, in Waterloo area. And we had the guitar player come in and then I came in and did all my vocals, background vocals. Uh, I had a really good friend of mine, Kyle Dorcock, come in. He came in and did some backing, backing vocals as well. Um, and uh, then all the guitars, banjo, mandolin, all those other accessory instruments were, were put on um, to you know, liven up the bed tracks. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it was really built from there. Um, and, uh, outsourced the mastering to Nashville, uh, keys and steel guitar were Nashville. Um, but yeah, that, that's basically how we did it. Um, I, I wrote this, all the songs acoustically to start. And mm -hmm. then, um, we just basically had the charts going into that first studio session and four musicians just hammered out. <laughs> we just hammered it all out. That's hammered yeah, it all that's, out. That's, yeah. So do you plan on like doing like some shows? Like, you know, what is that like yeah. you plan on touring off of this like EP? Yeah. So that's, that's the, uh, you know, that's the hope, right? Um, right now I'm playing, like I've, I'm pretty steady as a musician right now um, doing a lot of just bar gigs and weddings mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I DJ on the side. Uh, um, so that stuff's all going to be taking a little more of a back seat uh, once you know, this year the, the music comes out basically, you know, this year is to set up next year. Um, Makes sense. So everything's going to be released this year, get my name out there. And then hopefully next year, get on a festival circuit and, and, love it. and, uh, and do all and, you know, tour and do all those things yeah. along with the against the wind stuff. Cause we're, mm -hmm. we're going to have a busy year next year as well. So yeah, I love lots it. of, lots of good things happening, but uh, it's, you know, this year is the, the, the grinding and, and uh, you know, set up for next year. Yeah, I'm curious because you you mentioned that like you know you had you did some stuff like early on growing up you know you took the hiatus and I think that you know it's super inspiring to see you get back into it. Is there a different mentality now going into into this kind of like what we consider a second run? Um, yeah. Because like you you know you stopped 2014, it's 2022. Obviously, we know how you got like, you know, you kind of chatted yeah. a little bit about kind of the the, sh the shift in mindset. But like mm -hmm. what have been some of the obstacles you've had to kind of go through in order to kind of even start this project again and try to get it off its feet? Um, honestly, the, the only obstacles were with myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that's the biggest thing is just making yourself, you know, do these things. Um, but uh, now I feel like I'm, I've hit a good groove and um you know, it's, I had this big thing in my head that like, once you hit 30, you know, you're too old for all this and, and it's just all right? bullshit. Like <laughs> yeah. it's just all fucking bullshit. Sorry. Yeah. I, I hear you. No, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. And, um, and so I, I really just kind of looked at myself in the mirror and went like, you, you got lots of time, you know, just, yeah. just, just, just write, just create, just put it out and, and see what happens. And, and I'm lucky enough that I have, you know, a great, full-time job at the moment the moment that gives me a lot of freedom and they're mm -hmm. very supportive with music so um i'm i'm really happily content uh where i'm at and so that helps me to just keep working and building um and so i'm not in some big rush i'm not you know a broke musician on the on the side of the road by any means like i'm yeah, yeah. i can just i can just keep investing and keep building and uh and make this run you know, really worth it. And, and I'm going to be doing this stuff anyway. So it's like, yeah. you know, like, I'm not going to stop playing music. It's, it's what I do. So I, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely a mindset change. I was, you know, I was a, I was a bit of a, a brat when I was in, you know, 23, 24, I was, I had, a big head. I had a big yeah. head, man. I got, I had an ego and, and I think the biggest thing was like, I had to be torn down to that level yeah. um, and really kind of like find myself through those years after that. And now, you know, especially in the last couple of years, I just try and, and it sounds cheesy, but like, I just try and go at everything with gratitude and, yeah. and, you know, it, I get to do so many cool things. Like next week I'll, I'm going to pencil. I have two shows, a sold out show in Port Hope with against the wind and, and a show in um, Greensburg, Pennsylvania with against the wind, like two big theater gigs. Like not everybody gets to do stuff like that. And so yeah. that's, you know, I, I just try and, and remember that, uh, you know, I'm doing it. There's, it's it's uh i am i guess in the in the top percentile of what a successful musician would be called um in my mind so you know it's 
I make a good amount of money. I have a great living. I, you know, and that's uh, what else could you ask for? If, if, if I pop off, if I pop off, amazing, love it. But, uh, and I'm going to keep working towards that. But right now, like, I don't know, I just consider myself lucky. It's super inspiring to see, um, all you've gone through and all you pushed through. And I think it can inspire a lot of people that are, you know, that might have grown up playing music that want to even make another run at it themselves, but ton of value provided today. And I really appreciate it. Uh, really appreciate your time today, Ty. Of if somebody not. were to want to find your music, um, you know, learn a little bit more about what you're doing, uh, learn more about the, the couple projects, maybe even potentially come to one of your shows, like how, where is the best place to kind of follow your journey as you head into the rest of 2022? Oh, Instagram soon to be TikTok. <laughs> uh, yes. Ty, Ty Wilson music .com. Um, Instagram is ty, at Ty Wilson music, TikTok at Ty Wilson music, Facebook at Ty Wilson music, Spotify, look up Ty Wilson. Um, yeah, it, it'll all be, I'll be there, but Ty Wilson music.com is the website. If you want to just type in Ty Wilson to Google and you'll find it. Yeah, you you'll find it. it. You should yeah. be able to figure it out. If you're listening to this podcast, you should be able to figure out how to, Google I hope ty so. Wilson. I hope yes. so. Yeah. Ty, I appreciate your time today. I appreciate you coming on to chat a little bit about your journey. It's been super inspiring to see what you're doing. And I want to say thank you for tuning into another episode of the Studio P2PO podcast. If you're listening back on iTunes or Spotify, I want to say thank you for tuning into another episode. Really, our goal is to provide you with marketing and mindset knowledge, help you build, grow, and scale your business online. And uh, thank you for tuning in another episode of the Studio P2PO podcast. We will see you all soon.